Welcome back guys, got another video for you. We're gonna do another video on sub-orientation, positioning, does it really matter, ported edition. Last video I did in the beginning of my YouTube career, uh, if you wanna call it that, did a sealed orientation video on does it really matter which way the sub is positioned uh, or oriented. Uh, now what we're gonna do today is if you look back here, we got a ported uh, JLW3 uh, version 2 and uh, with a ported enclosure tuned around 38 Hertz roughly uh, around 1.75 cubes give or take now what we're gonna do is the same thing we did in that last video only difference is we're gonna keep the power around the RMS rating of the driver instead of sending it full tilt boogie we're gonna just send it the RMS rating so we can get an over overall score that's relatively the same and throw out the loading or unloading factors because I think that might have had a few things to do with the scores and why they were so close so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that equation out we're gonna just send it the same amount of power 500 RMS and uh, see what we come up with here we go all right let's find the peak of this enclosure we have the meter on the dash up front and we are in an outlaw orientation with one door open the right side of the vehicle is sealed So it looks like around 53 hertz this is liking it uh, now with a bunch more power applied that may change we're only sending uh, 121 wants to it right now so let's do uh, see if we can get 500 RMS to it at this frequency You can see my laptop jumping around there a little bit. Uh, we, able, we were able to get 491 watts. I uh, got a 137.7. Uh, so what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna play a little bit lower, see if we can get a louder score at a lower frequency around the same power. If not, that looks like our frequency. So I seen a peak around 48, 47. So let's give that a go and see what we can come up with. And our score went down so that looks like that's the most efficient way of getting that score uh, obviously you could send more power and maybe get a louder score but we are trying to stay around that 500 RMS so I think that is the ideal number to look at there we go only a 135.6 48 Hertz so let's go back and send it to 52 and we're gonna try to keep it at 500 RMS and that will be our number for sub firing forward because this looks like the uh, orientation where would be the loudest so we're about to find out Looks like around the same score. You see, my laptop was trying to run away from me there. Uh, don't do this at home, it's probably not great on your laptop. Uh, 137.6, 493 watts at 52 hertz. Not bad. Let's uh, spin her around and see uh, what we can get firing the rear.
All right, you can see I threw a little bit of padding underneath that laptop. Uh, we don't want to destroy it too fast. I uh, just bought it last year. So what we're going to do, uh, same thing. We're going to try the 52 hertz. See if that is our peak for sure. See what our score comes up with. Again, we are still on the dash. Uh, so without further ado, let's get going. is a prime example of why <laughs> with this type of enclosure sub firing to the rear with the port firing the same way as the driver is louder um, now every vehicle is different the type of ceiling and type of scores type of frequencies that you are trying to get it all varies but with this type of enclosure in this vehicle and or an SUV for that matter uh, the numbers are going to be relatively close to the same as you could see, we literally doubled our output, um, as in the same amount of power with twice the drivers or the same driver size with twice the power, but just by switching the enclosure to firing to the rear. Um, honestly, I think that's our best score. We don't even really have to find a frequency that would be better because you can see the difference already. Uh, I think that's proof in the pudding. So next, what we're gonna do, um, just for shits and giggles, we're gonna fire it to one side or the other where that might make a difference on the side of the meter that the vehicle's on, which we have it on the right side of the vehicle where the pressure is going to be accumulating the most with the distance of the wave of how far it has to go. Physics, don't wanna get into it, but that's kind of how things work. So hold on, let's spin her around and see what we can come up with next. All right, let's do the 52 Hertz again, 500 Watts. We're gonna try to stay under that and see what we can get with the port and sub firing to the right, which is the same side of the meter. Now, in my experience, this should be a lower score than firing it to the other side, but yet again, it all comes down to variables with the doors open, closed, sealed, etc., with the windows, everything. Tons of variables, don't need to get into it, but let's see what we can get out of this. over our 500 watt threshold 507 not a big deal but we were still able to get a louder score than the first run which is crazy uh 138.7 i believe that's a whole db over our first run just firing into the cabin here but not quite as loud as firing the rear so let's switch it around again and see what we can come up with all right again same thing Let's see what we can get under 500 watts, roughly around that. Uh, let's see if it's a louder score than firing to the right. It might be pretty close to firing the rear of the car. I know this uh, hatchback type uh, vehicle tends to like that with the sub back port to the side. So we'll see what it does with sub side port side. Uh, so without further ado, let's go. A 140 flat firing to the left side of the vehicle the driver side of the vehicle with the meter on the opposite side so it kind of shows you where the distance factor makes a difference with the port the sub and where you're putting the meter at uh, now to your ears I believe sub back is just going to sound better on both sides of the vehicle. You're going to have more natural sound on both sides compared to one side being louder than the other. But is it really noticeable? A 1 dB difference? I can't tell the difference. Now when it's 2 to 3 dBs, I think almost everyone can tell a difference. If not, I can. <laughs> so heck yeah, that's awesome. All right, so let's go over some of the numbers so far. When we had the sub firing into the cabin, uh, we were able to get a 137.6 on 493 watts of 52 hertz. Now, when we fired the subwoofer to the rear, we gained dramatically. 
uh, a 140.7, 52 hertz on 497 watts. So we're all around the same 500 watt threshold. So we gained literally 3.1 dBs just by flipping the sub around on the same power. Now, when we fired it to the right of the vehicle, we're, we were able to get a 138.7, which is actually our second lowest score. Um, a little bit louder than firing just into the cabin, but not making a dramatic increase by just sliding it that way with where the meter was positioned in the vehicle and the orientation that we have. Now, when we fired it to the left side of the vehicle, farther away from the meter, we were able to almost get that 140.7 that we had just firing to the rear. So again, it all makes a difference of how your enclosure is designed. Um, if you're looking for SPL, if you're looking for just louder bass, you know, when you're a daily guy and you're just driving down the street, you want it to sound louder. Friend gets in the car, you want it to sound loud too on your side and his side, or if it really makes a difference, I don't see the huge difference in that other than it's just a number. Always have to remember that SPL isn't everything unless you're a competitor. You want it to sound better? These are some small, simple steps you can do to make your enclosure sound better than just changing your whole enclosure or just adding power. I know so many guys that just, you know, I need a bigger amp, I need this, I need that. And it's like they don't do the rudimentary steps by enclosure size, if they have a custom enclosure, power, if they really wanna have the right kind of power, it takes power to make power. So you gotta buy the batteries, you gotta buy the alternators, you gotta buy the right size wire. And you don't wanna cheap out on CCA unless you plan on running double the amount of runs to keep up with the OFC. Been tested, check my other video here. Now, orientation. You know, that's something that you don't always think about. You throw a system in a car and you're like, well, I wanna see the speakers or it'll be louder facing me. Doesn't always mean that. All right, I forgot one thing. We gotta do it sub up. Oh my goodness, I totally forgot. Sub up, port up. Um, so let's fire it up and see what kind of score we can get. All right, don't mind the uh, crappy carpet job on this prefab. Someone put Velcro straps on the bottom of it so their box wouldn't move around, which isn't a bad, terrible idea. When you have a small car and you're trying to pick it up and like, put it somewhere without it touching and then it pulls your carpet it's just a pain in the butt ripped it off but you can still see the sticky on it so it is what it is but let's find out what kind of score we can get sub up firing up poured up flat on 502 watts which isn't too shabby um i'll have to look at the scores here okay sub so, yeah let's see at 139 we were louder than when it was firing the right side of the vehicle but we were not as loud as firing back or firing to the side now that firing to the side isn't a huge difference um a 138.7, I mean 0.3 dB difference. So you can see where it's not a huge gain, but it is better than firing into the car. You are getting some kind of loading and the, the waves are going a longer distance. So again, to reiterate on the on the scores, uh, loudest was firing to the rear, um, a 140.7. And then uh, second was firing left uh, to the left side of the vehicle. With the meter on the right side meter hasn't moved um and then third would be firing up um i think a good option would be either firing the sub back or up obviously you can see there's a little bit of a drop um in score but it's not very big um a 0.7 db difference it, it, it's definitely a jump from just firing that sub into the car and again um yeah fire into the right 138.7 um, left 140 flat, rear 140.7, and firing into the car 137.6, and firing up 139 flat. Um, yeah, I'll leave the uh, scores over here so you guys have an idea of which way worked the best for this vehicle, for this setup. 
for this enclosure and the power that we're putting on to it but uh i hope you guys take something from it sorry i forgot to throw in the uh sub up orientation part but uh there it is uh so if you guys like it please follow comment like and subscribe smash that like button and that written that notification bell please um a lot of my videos are external for me sharing on facebook because i'm more well known on facebook than youtube so if you guys would please ring that bell it would mean a lot because <laughs> there's a lot of youtubers out there and if you don't ring that bell sometimes you just won't get notified and my video will not come up on your browse features so please thank you appreciate it so much sweating i'm gonna go inside and catch some ac i'll see you guys later um before we end this video let's just see how loud we can get this jlw3 uh, we're gonna roll it up past 500. We're gonna go sub back So it's gonna be the loudest score that we can get and see how much power it'll handle uh, See how loud it'll get now. We're not gonna cook this thing because this is a good friend of mine and he just gave it to me uh, He's all Chris. He's all into fish and bass I met him years ago and he was like hey dude do you want this subwoofer and i'm like are you kidding me it's a jlw3 that's a 270 dollars driver new and he's like dude just take it i don't need it i'm like shoot okay cool got this box with it too but uh separately so it works for a little daily uh setup and anything you want to have extra base it'll work so nothing <laughs> enough of me talking all day let's spin this around and see what we can get oh yeah mind you this is all ran on the Kicker KXA 2400.1. It's only ran at 4 ohms, but uh, it can dish out the power even at 4 ohms. So let's see what we can get. All right, here we go. to max it that amp out anyway at four ohms we're going to be rising to shoot uh nine almost 10 ohms making almost 600 watts and we gained about a db not even a db and a half on 800 900 watts so you know that there can be a little bit more power added to this uh driver with its enclosure and you're still going to gain you haven't hit that uh <laughs> power compression limit or just reach a mechanical limit of the driver per enclosure so that's pretty cool and if this floor uh didn't go past the b pillar as much as it did and you threw this in a, in a competition vehicle uh or if you threw this into the lanes um trying to look at it you might have to slide the box a little bit farther up but you're pretty darn close to being in a modified street class which isn't terrible if this would fit in a street one say i didn't have this floor in here and i just had that subwoofer back there and it was below the back seat line it'd be in a street one class doing a 141 but that's at the dash so at least a 140 at the headrest which is not bad for a street one class and you're a beginner for a prefab enclosure so if you like what you saw make sure you tune in i try to post videos as frequently as i can uh between everything else going on it's crazy but you know what i love doing this stuff and when i have the time to shoot and film happy to help you guys out and i enjoy it along the way so if you like it smash a thumbs up comment down below what you like what you don't like otherwise i'll see you guys next time thank you for watching <laughs>